Eat them if you got them. This is a word. This is a word. This is a word. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another Food for Thought. Today, I'm going to sit down with y'all and I'm going to eat a little bit of watermelon and just talk about some things that have been on my mind. It's been a while since I've had an opportunity to sit down and just chat. Um, my last update was so frantic. There was so much stuff to fill you guys in on. Um, and it was like, I feel like it was all like information. And so there wasn't really a chance to go deep on any things. And there have been some things that have been on my mind that I've been wanting to talk about. Um, From the title of this video, or what I think is going to be the title of this video, you may have the, you may have gotten the idea that I'm going to talk a little bit about Dorian Ryder, and I am, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But you know, I just thought I'd just talk a little bit about the world and things that are going on. I feel like I've been so out of the loop, barely able to follow the news. Um, you know, I was checking out Democracy Now, uh, you know, and, you know, other news headlines and seeing what's going on with the investigation into the firing of former um, security, um, you know, our, like, chief security advisor to the president, uh, Michael Flynn, who, it turns out, was likely involved in some interactions with the Russians that are inappropriate. He has been, was involved in, I believe, some inappropriate actions, taking money from Turkey um, while he was working on the Trump campaign. And it seems that Donald Trump tried to obstruct justice. And the question now is not whether he did it, but more the question it, uh, of what it means when the President of the United States is guilty of the obstruction of justice and is the President of the United States above the law. And my sense of the matter is, we're going to discover that in our modern day and age, the President of the United States is above the law. And I think it's not so much that we've lost a sense of justice but I believe the real issue here is what has become of the whole political realm. And, you know, I say become, but the, the you know, the, I, it may simply be that it has always been this way. But as I experience our modern, at least in the United States, the modern political realm is... It's, um, you know, it's, a, you know, fraternity hazing. It's, it's, um, it's a game. It's Army versus Navy. It's Ohio State versus University of Michigan. It's not about the care and maintenance of a society. It's about these two teams that have entrenched themselves in power and serve the ruling class and put on a show. They put on a show for us. And we pick our sides and we follow our team and decide who's winning and who's losing. But very rarely do I find that there is a true debate about the care and maintenance of society and what it means to be responsible for the care and maintenance of society and whether or not the individuals who have been charged with that responsibility, even if that is the responsibility that we're charging them with, right? So, I mean, first we'd have to go back and we'd have to like find out whether or not people even expect their political leaders to take responsibility for the care and maintenance of the society, you know? Do we really think about that? Do we really, when we vote for these people, are we thinking about the decisions that they're going to be making during the time that they are in their office um, that are going to affect the rest of us? Or do we just, you know, we, do we just not care that much? Do our thoughts not just go that far? And I think 
it's a strong po po you know it's a strong possibility and i don't mean to like harp on you know people on youtube viewers on youtube because i know there are people who watch this channel who really are just kind of rooting for they're rooting for the left and you know they maybe think of me as a voice for the left and they want to check they want to tune in because they think that you know somehow um i reaffirm the for them the values that are woven into the ideology that becomes left thinking you know it may not necessarily be about the real possibility for change i know some who watch this channel definitely are interested in that, but probably not everyone. There are probably a lot of people who just watch this channel out of curiosity. They wanna see what I'm gonna say next or what I'm gonna do next, or they wanna see, you know, if I've pulled myself back together after, you know, I was, I hate to use this word, but you know, after I was assaulted by vegan gains. And even in, you know, we're talking about all of these debates that have been going on between vegans and non-vegans is any of this really about the forwarding of a movement for the liberation of animals to no longer be seen as property or is it just about you know i've picked a side and my side is winning now or my side is losing now because if you really think about it i'm sorry vegans we're we're not doing very well you know in terms of uh our reach in the society you know it's possible that we we might do better but we're not doing that well right now i don't think it's time for us to be celebrating and i certainly don't think that it's time for us to be celebrating you know when vegans go against vegans and destroy them right so now like what we're gonna pit all of the vegans against each other and destroy all but our favorites so then there will be no more vegans to spread the vegan message. Only like, you know, our superheroes, our, you know, action figures. I just got a message this morning from someone who called me a fag racist piece of shit. So... I'm always willing to admit that I'm racist. I know I'm racist because I've been brought up in a society that is founded on racism. And that ideology is part of my character. That's the foundation of my character, right? I've been raised to have certain thoughts about, about what it means to be black, what it means to be white in the United States. And I still struggle with these things. I'm racist. And if by fag the person meant, you know, that I'm homosexual, yes, I embrace that, right? But the piece of shit part of it, I honestly think that for this person, you know, the piece of shit is just an expression of their racism, right? It's an expression of their homophobia, right? So, and the person is not even self-aware enough to know that when they say something like that, that they're demonstrating how far from enlightened they actually are. So the tally continues, you know, as far as, and not to gloat, but I'm gloating a little bit. When I tally the idiocy of people who are supporters of vegan gains and the way that they express themselves on this channel it makes me feel like wow i don't you know there's i don't have much to worry about there right i didn't lose out <laughs> i didn't lose out when uh none of those folks um decided that they were going to like me or like my channel or like my content so I don't know. What does all this mean? In terms of politics, does it mean we may have an impeached Donald Trump? It's possible. I feel like if it happens, it will be insignificant. <laughs> we, will, we will have this, um, we will have this, you know, pomp and the, the pageantry of the, of the process of the impeachment of a president. And, you know, if it happens, 
And it will mean nothing because the power will still be firmly in the hands of the same ruling class that has been holding it since really probably the founding of this country. So, yeah. So, Dorian Ryder. Why am I making a video talking about Dorian Ryder? In part, this comes from a recent video I came across by Joe Best. And Joe seemed very upset. Particularly upset with the drama channels. Um, he was particularly upset with the drama channels because the drama channels, for some reason, have not been following the shenanigans of, of Durian Ryder. I mean, one, Joe, really? You have expectations for the vegan YouTube drama channels. Really, Joe? I don't think so. I think he was just, not trolling, but I really think he was just bored and needed something to rant about. And so that was as good a thing to rant about as anything else. I don't know what motivates Joe Best. I don't know anything about Joe Best. I don't know anything about Joe Best. I've only heard of him in relation to things that have been going on in Chiang Mai with Durian Ryder and the, you know, Chiang Mai Fruit Festival or whatever. <laughs> so. I'm completely out of that loop, but with everything that's happening in the world today, who has the time to worry about what Durian Ryder is doing, even if what he's doing is heinous? Is he breaking the law? Is he breaking the law? If he is, call 911, you know, report it, you know, or do whatever it is that you do when someone's breaking the law and you're unhappy about it. But why do we need a you know, vegan drama channel to make a video about it? And then the other question is why would the vegan drama channels not want to make a video about Durian Ryder? And I guess the question here is and I'm, I'm guessing this is going to be the title of this video. Is Durian Ryder even relevant? Is he relevant to the vegan movement? Is he relevant to YouTube? Is he relevant as a cyclist? I don't know. I mean, I don't follow him. I know there are some certain people who think he's a fa fabulous cyclist and as I'm not in the cycling world, I don't know anything about that. But for really the entire time that I've been aware that there has been someone named Harley, and I don't know what Harley's last name is, um, you know, he's been, you know, being a little bit of a problem in the community. He's been saying things, he's been trying to get people drinking, you know, that particular soft drink that I believe is made by the Coca-Cola company. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's been saying horrible things about people. He's been involved in scandals. What is this, per you know, how is this person at all relevant to veganism? And I know that people will say, well, he is responsible for making so many people go vegan. Richard Simmons is responsible for a lot of people losing weight. Richard Simmons is responsible for a lot of people getting into health and exercise. Do any of you even know who Richard Simmons is? Do you know what I mean? I rest my case. Um, this whole idea, this whole idea that you know someone does something and it. forever stamps them as an icon 
What makes you an icon is that you live in the minds of the population. You live in the mind of the population, you know? Nicki Minaj is an icon. Whether you like Nicki Minaj or not, you probably know who Nicki Minaj is. And if you don't know who that person is with the pink hair, if you don't know who that person is making the video about the big butts, you've probably seen images of that person, right? So that person is relevant. Nicki Minaj is relevant as an icon. Um, how long will Nicki Minaj be relevant? I don't know because these things shift so quickly these days. There was a time that you would have an icon and that icon would be, you know, it would last forever. Uh, it would last, you know, a, a lifetime. It would outlast the person's, the span of the person's life, right? You could accomplish something. There was once upon a time you could accomplish something and you would be remembered for it. Um, for, you know, decades, centuries, right? I don't know that Harley has made the kind of contribution to the world that allows him to float on his status as an icon. Um, folks like Harley, folks like any of these kind of YouTube personalities need to continually be making a contribution that matters in order to continue living in the minds of the population. And the guy's not doing that. What has he done lately? You know? And I'm beginning to think that that is true of a lot of our vegan icons. They're losing their relevance as more and more content creators emerge who are thoughtful, who are engaged in other aspects of the world, right? Not just veganism, but how are they applying veganism in the context of their lives? Right. You know, there's a certain way. I mean, there's certain people who have really just made a name for themselves as vegan activists who go out and in the street and have conversations with people. And they do this constantly. And they're, you know, maintaining their relevance through constant engagement through veganism with the public. You know, what is Harley doing except trying to keep his name alive for things that he's done in the past, for his generosity in the past. And I don't have any hard feelings against this person. I don't know this person. This is not me attacking. This is not me criticizing. I'm not even criticizing this person. I'm just, I'm the, you know, it's, if, if anything, I'm talking about, you know, Joe Best and, you know, how is it expected that someone is going to continue to be, you know, glued to their screen watching, you know, what this person is up to. There's so many, you know, my down, my neighbor down the street is into, you know, something, right? So somebody, you know, two blocks from my house is doing whatever Harley is being accused of now. That's happening within, you know, 50 feet of my house. It's happening. And so I don't necessarily need to spend any more time in my day watching a video discovering that someone's, you know, you know, responsible for some bad behavior. And I think that, you know, the, the, the reputation of Harley as I perceive it is not very good. It's not very good. And though people are constantly coming to his defense, people are constantly coming to his defense. So what do you do? So you have, you have Leanne, who's completely attempted to reinvent herself in doing the ASMR, and you have other folks making videos saying, freely, come back, we need you, and the vegan, veganism needs you. This might be true. But 
clearly, you know, in, 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 in order to stay relevant, in order to continue making a living <laughs> as a YouTube content creator, Freely needed to bust some moves, needed to make some moves. And uh, I don't, haven't necessarily seen um, that from Harley. I mean, this, the same is true with Vegan Gains. Vegan Gains has, you know, gone from being someone who was, you know, focused on the fitness community and focusing on veganism and sharing information about veganism. And now he's, you know, becoming an anti-social justice warrior. You know, he's basically, you know, in bed with, you know, self-proclaimed racists, self-proclaimed white nationalist. To stay relevant. To stay relevant. And you know, so it's not a criticism. I'm just looking up the nuts and the the nuts and bolts of this of this platform and the things that people are doing. And just, you know, realizing we have to admit that, you know, nothing lasts forever, that you can't rest on your laurels, right? Like all the, a bunch of platitudes that I can throw at you all that relate to what is happening, right? People, you have to be, you have to be doing the work. You have to be working. It's constant. You know, I've, I stopped putting out content every day and you know, the crickets are chirping, right? I don't know if anybody's even gonna see this video. But uh, you, have to, you have to keep working to stay relevant. And you know, here I have a, you know, a physical space where people are coming and exploring veganism and vegans are coming and helping to develop the space, right? That's a lot of work. And you know, I have no following at all. I mean, I have a very, very small following, right? And that's putting in a lot of time, physical labor, um, investing resources into a project. This is not a complaint, but it's just to make it clear that this isn't something that just, it's not handed to you. Your relevance is not just, it's not a given. It's the result of extreme dedication and not that I'm not saying that these people aren't dedicated but what is the you know where, where is it evidenced in their in their current content I suppose it's very easy for me to sit here eating a watermelon being very smug about these things, but that's what's been on my mind. What else? Chris is coming tomorrow. I have another friend who's coming in from Brooklyn. Uh, Jack will be here. Uh, it'll be, you know, it'll be cool. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of work has happened on the house, you know, maybe, you know, maybe I'll do another walkthrough. It's probably time for another walkthrough because the last video just, it's not, it's not the same space. It's not the same space at all. So, you know, maybe you guys can look forward to that. I have in the can a convertible with Mrs. King, um, Kearney and Ethan and me, we all went over and made a nice little vegan meal. Um, I also told you guys that I'm in search of this vegan makeup store that's opening as a pop-up, just, you know, maybe not, maybe half a mile from, from Altspace, which is really cool because it would be nice to know that like there was a little vegan community building up around, around the space. I don't know. We'll see, but I'll go and visit them and I'll bring them my card for Altspace and take some of their cards and have it here and make a little video about them. What else? This play. Y'all, this play is coming along. So uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll interview, maybe I'll interview some of the company members, what have you. Certainly not. I don't feel like I have the same access that I had when I was a journalist. Oh, I don't know if I ever told you all, but there's a, 
um, a feature on Ready, Set, Go, Race that was done on Brooklyn Independent Television through Brick, which is a, I believe they're a network, I believe they're a studio um, in, in Brooklyn. But uh, I will include a link to that. I should have made so much more of a deal about it. It was, it's a really, really cool thing. Anyway, so they interviewed me and they interviewed a bunch of the actors and the uh, composer and yeah, so I'm gonna link to that. Um, and also there is a video, the video is ready for Ready, Set, Go Race. I've watched it a few times. Ethan and I have watched it and we get really excited watching it. But um, as I said before, we're working um, to set up some way for Falcon Works to be able to make that available for people for a, you know, some kind of reasonable exchange. Guess what, y'all? That's it <laughs> for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. And this is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.